Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I wanted to talk to you guys about one of my all-time favorite diagramming application called Lucidchart. So I know that you guys are um, familiar with Visio as it's uh, one of the Microsoft Office's uh, software that can be used for diagramming purposes, but there's also an alternative that you can use online called Lucidchart and I've been using it personally for the last couple of years and I just found it very effective because it, it is actually very uh, user intuitive. Uh, it's very easy to navigate and you can just sign it up for free. Uh, you don't have to uh, sign up for premium for your trials, but it also shows you different um, templates and diagrams. So if you're somebody who is not familiar with how to create a diagram, you can definitely look at one of their existing templates to get an idea and you can actually leverage that as well. So I personally think that it's very important for you to understand how to draw a diagram as an effective business analyst because most people are visual learners. For example, I sometimes get lost in the weeds when we are discussing about complex system integration without having any diagram or anything to refer to. Personally, I think it's really important for you to understand how to draw a simple diagram. And as sometimes projects get more complex and there are more cross-functional teams involved, yes, some of the diagrams can look a little bit more intimidating because it involves so many different stakeholders, but I think it's so, I think it's so critical for you to have a basic understanding of how to create a process diagram so then you can actually use it for your meetings or workshops or in your documentation. So in today's video, I'm going to do a walkthrough end to end of how to create a very simple business process diagram. So if this is something that you're interested, then just keep on watching. So without further ado, let's get started. So easiest way for you to get started is by creating a simple template. Um, you actually have an option to start a blank document or document from template, as I mentioned before, or you can import from another program if you've been working on another design. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, for today's purposes, I'm just going to show you exactly what I would normally do. So as you can see, there are many different options and drop downs, but I'm going to go ahead and choose build flowcharts and swim lane diagrams. And I'm just going to select this one um, because this is a, a basic flowchart with swim lane template. So I'm going to just go ahead and click on this. So to give you a brief overview, a swim lane diagram is a type of flowchart that delineates who does what in a process. So it's actually very useful if you want to see who is responsible for what in a business process. And similar to kind of like having lanes in a swimming pool, this swim lane diagram provides clarity and accountability by placing process steps within either the horizontal or vertical swim lanes of a particular employee, work group, or department. So normally for me, I like to think about what is the overall objective? Why am I building this diagram? Who's my audience? So I think about these three things uh, even before I start um, brainstorming some of the ideas. But once I'm clear on my audience and what I need to do and what my goals and objectives are, then Normally, I would take a pen and paper and start diagramming and get a rough sketch before I actually create one in Lucidchart. So in order to facilitate this exercise, I just came up with this simple goal, which is to draw a business process diagram of integration between purchasing and receiving inventories in a warehouse. So this is what you know so far as a business analyst. You know that a purchaser submits a requisition which then turns into a purchase order, which then needs to go to a manager for approval. So once the manager approves it, then email notifications get sent out. Purchase orders then get sent to vendors who then delivers inventories. So once those inventories arrive, then warehouse 
manager and their warehouse people will receive them and then enter it into your system. So some of the key questions that you need to ask before you begin your diagramming process is who are the key stakeholders involved in this business process and what are the key decision points and what happens next? So in this case, it would be purchasing and warehouse employees that are going to be involved in the process as well as purchasing manager. Okay, what are the key decision points? So there is one of the decisions is that this purchase order can either be order can be approved or rejected by purchasing manager, right? And if it gets rejected, it has to, purchaser has to create a new rendition. Okay, so with this business process in mind, let's now go back to Lucid Chart and see if we can create a flow chart diagram. Okay, so now we're back in our template and I just wanted to let you guys know that there's a quick note section about learn about this template. So you can actually take a look and there are some helpful tips such as, you know, using swim lanes to understand which department is responsible for performing each task and then access Lucidchart's flowchart shape library, which is here. And if you want to change it, then I think there's more, more shapes. So here's where you can also go in and change and update the library. So without further ado, um, normally you can change the name of the flowchart. So instead of flowchart with swim lanes, you can say creation of purchasing warehouse inventory process. You can name it something else. Um, now we're going to actually go in and I'm going to just update the header for each of the swim lanes. So as I mentioned before, you can either have horizontal or vertical swim lanes so you can actually change it right here. You can also have more lanes or less lane, but the first swim lane is going to be represented by purchasing department. So I'm going to create a purchasing department. I'm also going to create warehouse and then those are going to be my tw two swim lanes for now. Okay, so my recommendation is to always start off by adding specific departments because swim lanes are best represented when you're trying to map out processes of different uh, cross-functional teams. So in this case, we're going to draw the business process of integration of purchasing and warehouse and how they're handling inventory. So um, I think this is how we can start. So you can you can actually have um, a starting point and then you can also add different processes and decision. So if we go back into our notes, the first step is purchaser submits a requisition, right? So um, this is the first step. Purchaser submits requisition. So you can just shorten the text to whatever makes the most sense to you. And you can also move it around and you can add different steps or directions as you can see from here. So purchaser submits requisition and then I'm going to add another process right here. So here you can just create a new process. And then it turns into a purchase order, which then goes to the manager.
And then here you can have a decision of manager approves PO. At this point, this is okay. And at this point, this is the decision, one of the decisions that we discussed earlier, where purchase order can be approved or rejected by purchasing manager. If it gets rejected, purchaser has to create a new requisition. Okay, so that means uh, if yes, then, so in case you guys are wondering why I'm copying and pasting instead of using uh, one of these workflows is because of the formatting. As you can see, um, this new process has different formatting than the than existing one. So just for consistency and ease of access, that's why I've been copying and pasting. I'm going to search for an icon and I found the one that I like. Okay, so if manager approves PO, then email notification gets sent out. If it gets rejected, then purchaser has to create a new requisition again. Okay, if it's no, then we have to go back all the way here. Okay, and then I'm gonna create a new, new process. Oh, and then I just realized that I forgot to add vendor. Okay, uh, once POs get sent to vendor who then delivers inventories, right? So here is, um, Gonna change this to vendor, and then I'm gonna here where pass. So then, once this gets sent to the vendor, then create vendor. Uh, Processes order and also vendor delivers the delivers inventories, and then here. And then the warehouse actually delivers, receives receive inventories. Receive inventories. And then I think finally enters it in the system. Okay, so this is what it looks like once we're done. As you can see, let's do a quick walkthrough to make sure that we, we've captured all the information. Purchaser submits a requisition, which then turns into a purchase order, with, which then needs to go to the manager for approval. So from here, we start purchaser submits requisition. Requisition becomes a purchase order, which then manager has to approve. If it's yes, then there's an email notification that gets sent to the vendor who then process the order. If it doesn't get approved um, by the manager, then we have to go back to this step of where purchaser submits, resubmit a requisition. And then from here onwards, vendor can process the order. They make the deliveries 
and then warehouse then can receive those inventories and then enter, enter it into the system. And at the end, you can actually add another terminator. Um, and then you can actually say, end and can color it. Normally we color it red. So this is how it signifies that um, this is the end of the process. So yeah, so this is what the final product looks like. So that's it for today's video. I hope you guys found today's tutorial helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. If you have any tips or tricks that you want to share with the rest of us, then feel free to do that too. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.